hello everybody. I think I see some familiar faces. Hi, thanks for showing up, coming out tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, my name's Jason King. I'm a sound effects editor, sound designer, mixer, so on. Uh, predominantly, I work within the post-production field, so what I'll be showing you guys tonight, predominantly things that pertain to post-production, but certainly you can put them into music or other things that you wanted, maybe you're a podcaster or a filmmaker or something of that sort. Um, give you a little bit of my, uh, insight about myself. I've been in the sound industry now 28 years. I've kind of done everything that I possibly can within post-production, but pretty much have settled in sound effects editing and sound effects mixing, which is what I just absolutely love. Every, every night I go home, my wife asks, hey, what'd you do today? Shot people. <laughs> so just to start it out, let's, uh, let's close this first thing. I'm going to get into some of the very, very initial stuff with... Uh, with RX. One thing I want to just point out to start out with, let's close that session. Um, something I do that is a little different than most people, uh, I don't use a mouse. And particularly with, uh, you guys okay with that? I want to make sure I'm not getting too much uh, breath in that mic. Um, I like to have a Wacom pen tablet for doing all of my work. And with Isotope specifically, it makes it really, really powerful. So rather than having to have a mouse, like trying to draw a circle with a mouse, never going to happen. So when you're doing things that are very, very uh, precise, it's really important to have the most precise tool that you can. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to show off a very, very simple thing that I like to do with RX, which is I've got some sound effects here. And what I need to happen with those sound effects is... I need to make sure that they can work. <laughs> and what I've got is from a movie that I did for Mr. Eastwood, a uh, picture called Jersey Boys, um, Eastwood wanted us to have the exact cars that we shot in the film. He wanted to have us record those cars because he loved the sound of them. The bummer was halfway through the day, one of the car's engines started to kind of give out, and the valves and the engine started making lots of squeaks and noises all this crap all over it. But Mr. Eastwood said, Jason, we need to have that Cadillac. So what am I going to do? Say, dude, no. <laughs> He's dirty, hairy. Come on. So I wanted to go ahead and fix that thing. So the other tool I like to use with RX, which is really handy, uh, a lot of people, they always try to talk me out of it and say, but the Apple keyboard menu item system preference does the same thing as quick keys. And I say, no, it doesn't. I love me some quick keys. And mostly why I love quick keys is it can do things when I'm working with RX, makes them happen a lot faster. So like right now, I've got a, a stereo clip here that's an, uh, an MS effect that first we want to decode. So I'm going to send that over to RX. And I have just a single keystroke, option F7, opens up the RX Connect window, sends it over to RX, and we get a chance to open it up here. And one thing I can show you right off the bat, let me go to our default setting. When you start off with RX, <coughs> You usually see it in this mode where we have a spectrogram behind and the waveform in front of us. We're all kind of familiar with uh, the waveforms in Pro Tools, which is nice, but it's just up and down. It doesn't give you a lot of precision as far as what is going on in there. So I usually get rid of the waveform and I sit in this spectrogram mode. Now let's go back up to the top. Let's, let me play the sound. Hear all that high-end ticky kind of crap? Terrible, man. I can't present that. So let's talk about a couple of things I'm going to do to make this thing work. And again, maybe I could go ahead and I could re-record this, or I could just make my existing recordings work. I'm going to make the existing recordings work, because often that's what we're left with as sound professionals. We have only what we've got to work with. So first off, um, going back to the spectrogram, First thing I can tell you about this sound is the left channel is louder than the right. And I can tell that just visually looking at it. And with my experience with MS recorded sounds, I can look at that and tell you that's MS. So first thing I need to do is decode this thing. Luckily, RX has a nice MS decoder built in. Let's go over to our mixing window, bring up MS decoder, process it, and look, lo and behold, both sides are about the same exact level now. And sorry about that. Apologize terribly. 
So now I can go in there and get rid of our ticky tickies. But as you can see, there's like 20 of them here. There's 20 of them there. This is going to take forever. And actually, I didn't have RX-6 when I did this. So I spent the day, <laughs> maybe even two or three days, going through this stuff and remastering all my effects. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take care of this pretty quickly. So what I need to do is I need to zoom into the area where the offending audio is. So a couple ways we can do it. First off, what I'm going to do is just use a range. I'm going to select a range, which we can either hit the R key or click on the little box with the dashes around it. And that gives us a little sort of... Uh, target arrow, and we can drag across something. Now I'm going to deselect that with an Apple D, because I want to make it a little bit tighter. I'd like to be in there. There's another button that has a magnifying glass with the similar dots around it. Click on that, and it zooms to whatever you've selected, so we can get nice and precise on it. Getting back to our Wacom tablet, here's a great usage for it. I need to select the tickies, and I can get right on top of them that precise. If I'm using the mouse, let's grab the mouse. Let's see. Let's undo. It's, I can't really do it. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm just going to give up, and I'll do this, and I'll get right on top of it. Now, what I also need to do is get rid of this. In addition to selecting it, usually what I try to go for in the beginning is I'll go for a spectral repair attenuate. Put it on multi-resolution, it looks, that's where RX decides it's going to try to figure out the best way to take care of it. Do I need 512 bands? Do I need 4,000? It's going to figure it out. It's a computer. Let it work. So if I hit process, there it is. Yay, look, it's gone. That one. Well, how many do I have to do? A lot. So let's undo that. And let's check out one of our new functions in RX6 that I wish I had two and a half years ago. So let's find this. Well, let's find the next one. Oh, there's the next one. Let's find the next one. Let's find the previous one. Well, no, let's just get them all. So it's going to look through the sound. And actually, this is a really long file. So let me just do this. Let me send this back. Let's render it. Because this is like a three and a half minute file. And if we haven't looked through the entire thing, we might all be hanging out together for the rest of the evening. So, and I, my wife would really get bummed at that. So let's send this back. I'm just going to grab the first part. So we've just got about a 12 second little file. Let's go ahead and go back to our same zoom thing we did before, R. Click with the magnifying glass. Go back to our lasso. Select our little thing that we dig. Love it. Now I'm going to zoom back out. And now let's find all. And there we go. And it just grabs them all, and I can attenuate. Boom, done. And I, now I can get to Tin Horn Flats a little quicker and have two pints of beer, So, which is really all, all we're looking to do, right? So now I can go back through, and I can get rid of the other ones, like this guy here. Let's find all. Process them. This guy. Find all. Process them. And this is just down and dirty. A couple that are peeking out, I'd have to go back and get those. But now I've saved that recording that previously I would have had to have either thrown it away or go back and record it again. And that card died, so there was no going back and getting that car recorded again. Um, it was a really beautiful blue Cadillac. Do I have a picture? Let's see, is it still there? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> There's the Cadillac right there. It was that car right then. Beautiful car, but it died. And it is fun, though, just as a side note, we actually got to use the actual car as the, the car recording. So that was actually kind of cool. So that right there, that's our new find all or find next. You can go back through our undo queue. If you wanted to just go back through and find similar ones, let's go to the next one. We have just a keystroke for that. Keep on going through. What if you have like a squeaky kick drum pedal or something of that sort? Same kind of thing. So that there is find all, find next, find previous, find stuff. Another thing you can do with it, I haven't done this, but you could have it add markers at all those places so you could see where they are. Maybe you need to communicate down the line to other people because we don't always work in just you know singular, singular spaces. So that's another aspect of it that can be very, very handy. And you've got a slider that can mess with things and its similarity. So I guess it's looking at, does this thing look very similar to this one and so on? I assume that's what it's doing, but I have, I'm a sound guy. I just grab the sliders and I move it around. Does it sound good now? Does it sound good now?